Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor with a short screencast on Notepad++ and how to fix the problem when the run menu does not show any of the launch options like launch in Chrome, launch in IE, launch in Safari, launch in Firefox. So we've got to fix this because that's a very handy thing. I have a test1.html file here. You can see by the path up in the title bar that it's on my desktop folder which is technically in the C drive, users folder, Lisa subfolder. Let's say I can never get the run options to work off the run menu. Or let's say I'm in another code editor that doesn't have this feature. How do I force this HTML, this test1.html file into a browser? So here I am in Chrome. If I press control O keystroke, I get an open dialog box and I can navigate to the folder with my desktop folder and my test one HTML document and open it up and there's my unordered list one, two, three. If I press control O and go at it the hard way, the desktop folder is a little shortcut folder up here because we put things there. It's easy to find things there, but technically it's on the C drive, in the users folder, in the Lisa folder, in the desktop folder, and there are all the things in the desktop again. And there's my test one.html file. I could open it up the long way if I wanted to, too, and there it is. So that's how to force a web page, an HTML page, into a browser without this nifty run launch option. But let's talk about the run launch option. When I Googled for this problem, I found that there is a file called shortcuts.xml. It's a configuration file, which simply means it contains information about how Notepad++ is going to operate. XML stands for Extensible Markup Language, and it looks a lot like HTML with these tags, but instead of containing information that we're going to show on a web page, it contains information about the Notepad++ application. So the trick to fixing this is to find the shortcuts.xml configuration file and do what this article says, and that's what I'm going to demonstrate next. Our first step is to find the shortcuts.xml file. If you go into Windows Explorer and use your search bar and search across your entire C drive, I found shortcuts.xml and I'm going to view and look at details. And there's a couple shortcuts. I don't want that. I want the full actual file. And if I expand this, I can see that the shortcuts.xml, the actual file, the document, not a shortcut, but the actual document is found in the user's Lisa app data roaming folder. Okay. So I have to go back to Notepad++, file, open. I have to go into my C drive, get into my users folder, my Lisa folder. That will probably be your name. What app data, roaming, Notepad++ folder. And there I should be finding the shortcuts.xml file. So there it is. I'm going to open it up into Notepad++. And what you're going to see is a big green comment that has, in effect, commented out the shortcuts that we want. And so the trick is then to make these command name lines visible to the file instead of commented out. There's two different ways to do that. Comment starts with these characters and ends with these characters. So one way of fixing this is just to move the end of the comment, dash, dash, greater than sign, or right angle bracket. I'm going to cut that, and I'm going to paste it at the end of the comment so that these four commands, launch in Firefox, IE, Chrome, and Safari, those commands are now visible. Another way is just to delete the comment altogether. But remember, if you delete that comment, you're always going to have to find where that comment end, those three characters, and delete those as well. But I've got the comment changed so that it finishes on the message. It doesn't finish on these command lines. I'm going to save. I'm going to close all of Notepad++. I'm going to restart it and look at my run menu, and there we go. I've got the launch options that I wanted. So this is what your shortcuts.xml file should look like. You want these commands to be available, which means either deleting the comment and the three characters that end the comment, or merely moving those three characters to the end of the message so that these command lines are visible and available to the computer. So now when I go to my test1.html, I can run and launch it in Firefox. And that's enormously easier to me than typing the path to a local file up here in the address bar of the browser 
or processing control O in any browser and picking through your open file dialog box. And one last tip, go back to Windows Explorer, everyone, and please click the View tab and click the file name extensions. Always show your file name extensions. If I uncheck that, which is the default for Windows, you can't tell what types of files these are because we're not seeing the extensions. Well, yes, you can a little bit here in this type column when you're showing your files with details. But I love to see the file name extensions because those extensions, XLS, DOCX, JPG, PDF, MP4, PNG, all those extensions tell me something about the file that's very important, particularly when I'm in Notepad++ and I file Save As, and I notice that I can save my file with any of these extensions, and that helps color code the file for that language. I always want to be able to see that extension when I'm working on my computer as a developer. So always go back to Windows Explorer and make sure on the View tab that the file name extensions checkbox is checked and send a nasty note to Bill Gates as to why, out of the box, Windows doesn't show that important information. Thank you.